And I do believe that we have rotten, rotten politics, and I'm, I'm not using that as an exaggeration. Hey everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be having a look back in the past. Remember when Brexit was going on and we were fighting for our right to freedom, etc, etc. And they were saying that all of our fears, i.e. EU army, um, removal of sovereignty, removal of nation states, etc, etc, etc. Were all classed as by the media and establishment on all sides as conspiracy theory. Quite a few people were actually cancelled because of said conspiracy theory. Well, it turns out it's all true. Every last bit of it and some of the words that are being said at the moment should shock the entirety of Europe. Now, the headline is EU Empire Euro Conference approves joint armed forces, more centralised power for Brussels. Now, this was a conference in Strasbourg, France on Saturday. A plenary session of the conference on the future of Europe approved over 300 proposals and some of the proposals were things like, are we ready? The establishment of a joint armed forces of the European Union. I would like to stress at this point, why would the EU need an, a military if most of the nations in the EU are in NATO as well? Anyone? Anyone? Makes me think that they wouldn't use that for anything other than controlling Europeans. Am I wrong? Let me think, let me know if you think I'm wrong on that. Including the establishment done that, as well as the empowering of the European Parliament to propose, propose its own legislation. Currently, EU level legislation is initiated almost solely by the unelected European Commission and the elimination of na national vetoes. This is a big one in my honest opinion. As we know, the way it works is things are put forward and if any nation has a problem with it, it doesn't get put through, i.e. there has to be a majority of everybody, a consensus, so to speak. So they've got to discuss it and find alternatives, etc, etc. Well, now they want to get rid of the veto and now it can be done by majority, which essentially takes away the power of the smaller nations in the European Union. They will have zero say in anything going forward now because they're not able to put a veto on things that would personally affect their, their nation, effectively removing sovereignty and national state. So this is an absolute joke. Now, obviously, Guy Verhofstadt that and the man with teeth this under has been denying this sort of thing was happening for a long, long time. Well, it turns out now he's all for it and some of the words that has come out of his mouth are absolutely disgusting. Have a listen to this. He said, the European Parliament will take up the measures next week for consideration in hopes of making them into law as soon as possible. There is no time to lose, he said. The world of tomorrow is a world of empires. I'll let that sink in a little bit. Empires. So he wants to create a European empire. You know, conspiracy Conspiracy number one. The thing that all of us were predicting and all of us were effectively smeared and shamed for saying it. It's good, isn't it? Let's carry on. It's a world of danger. We've seen it with Ukraine and in this world, the Ukraine and in Europe and in this world, we need to defend ourselves, to organise ourselves, to defend the interests of our citizens and therefore we need to reform the union. Haven't you got NATO to protect yourselves? Why do you need another military other than you want complete control over the ability to defend yourself? He also also said that reforms, 300 of them, are necessary for the EU's survival. In other words, they're going to force, in my honest opinion, their will on others. Now, let's not forget, they actually class themselves as Europe. Do you know how much of Europe is actually in the EU? Just as a guess, now that we've left, supposedly, although we've only left on paper, haven't we? What's actually happened is we left it in, in name only and all of our leaders are still 100% invested in the EU empire. Well, it's actually 56%. Only 56% of Europe is in the EU, but they call themselves Europe. Let's have a listen to what they've actually said when it comes to celebrating all of these going through. This is the state of the European Union. This is, let's not forget, the removal of nation states' ability to govern themselves. Let's have a listen. I'm now able, as co-chair of this conference, and in the name of both my dear colleagues, Mr. Guy Verhofstadt and State Secretary Born, to confirm that this plenary has reached a consensus on the proposals as required by the rules of procedure. And I therefore commend the consensus to the plenary.
Thank you very much. Now, didn't that creep you out, everyone? See how many people are, are there clapping along to the removal of all of these freedoms from nations to govern themselves. This is sick, in my honest opinion. And it also shows you why they got rid of the veto. Did you see how many sheep were stood up, lap, and seals going, ur, ur, ur. that's effectively the majority they need to put any proposal through that they wish from now on. Democracy, my backside. Bureaucracy of the highest order. Let me know what you think, though. I'd like to know your opinion, everyone. Let me know. If you're new to the channel, please share it out and hit the like button. Stay sane. See you on the next one.